So as you can see, Spaghetto is wearing aviators right now. And uh, I'll let you guess the reason for that. It has nothing to do with uh, consumption of a certain substance. Don't worry about it. He's, he's, he's totally not high or anything. Anyway, here we are with Slay the Princess, a game where you slay the princess or you don't. And uh, that's up to you. And we're going to go ahead and play the game. What are we doing? <laughs> yeah, as you can see, he's, yeah, it, there's been a lot of substance it's consumed in the last hour of his life. Let's jump into this with our legs, of course, Lars. I don't think you should be doing any uh, physical activity right now, now that you've been smoking the ganj. Lars, I'm not smoking. It's too hot. Oh, wait, Cole, what? No. Yeah, you're what? right. So, someone is confused. It's not definitely not smoking weed. <laughs> I'm tired. Shut the, shut the fuck up. <laughs> Binding? Binding of Isaac? Among us? Ha 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 ha. Alright, Lars, are you ready to slay the princess? Yeah, what happened to her arm? Force our way out of here together. She her arm to her mouth, her teeth tearing through her limb with the determination of a trapped wolf. Wow. So, um, Last time she gnawed her arm off and then we died and then we came back and she was being really creepy but we we left together and it was all whimsical and we loved each other. Now okay. We are we went back and we're going to we're going to kill her because she's kind of uncomfy. Blade in hand, you run the princess down. Wait. No. You barbarian, what do you think you're doing? <laughs> Would you ignore the pleas of the foolish little voice and press on? The princess's eyes grow wide with terror as you approach. Feels like her boobs she got bigger. Absolutely nothing to stop you. Well, that's what happens when you're really scared. Your boobs grow. Oh, okay. You must be scared a lot. Heart. You did nothing wrong. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Not you. I'm going to die now. I think that's what you want. <laughs> and just like that, she's dead. And the world is safe. Thank you for seeing this through. I know it must have been difficult. Achievement unlocked, Lady Killer. Oh, I'm nice. sick. Sick? You took part in the murder of the fairest creature that's ever lived. And I actually think really this part of the dialogue sick. is more gross than what we just did. I, for one, am absolutely distraught. Yeah. Grief stricken. Just the simpiest of fucking simpletons. You'll get over it. You just saved everyone. Get over it. You smarmy ass. There's nothing in the world worth getting over it for. We might as well just end it all. You oh. The blade, aiming the point directly towards your hut. Excuse me? No, you absolutely do not do that. Yeah, let's not make any rash decisions. We should give ourselves a minute, take a deep breath, and rash. The only rash decision we've made was running our cursed blade through her heart this is far from rash this is measured this is the only thing left for us to do now that she's gone this is kind of cringe not gonna lie yep all right um i'm the one who makes the decisions here and i say no if that's what you want to do let's see what happens remain silent let's defy fate okay Let's not. I don't want to die. Exactly. You're not doing this. All of you may have previously thought that my passions were too great to stifle, but those were merely passions of joy. My passions of sorrow run deeper than the ocean itself. Ugh. And you'll find that they are far more unstifleable. Haven't you? Haven't you all? I don't believe this. What? What don't you believe? You plunge the blade into your own heart and collapse to the floor. You can't be serious. Why are you helping him? I'm not. He just made it happen. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. You're all sorry. Oh, whoops. Everything goes dark and you die. 
chapter three. The, the gray. gray. Wait, the gray. Sorry. On a path in the woods. You horrid monster. Do you think just because we've returned to the woods you've earned my forgiveness? Our beloved had best be alive and well when we return to the cabin, or you'll never know the end of my wrath. Wrath? Kind of looks like weird nipples well in the background. We return to that oh. cabin because she's dead. We killed her. So, we have multiple extra voices this time. Yep. Huh. Voice of the cold. Remember you him? Killed her. Yeah. And so I killed you. And you clearly didn't do a good enough job. <laughs> I'm still here. Well, oh, I'm still here too. If you lot get to be blessed with seemingly eternal life, that must mean she's still there, waiting for us to throw ourselves at her feet in remorse. I doubt it. I think I'm better at killing than you are. So you've been here before. Of course you've been here before. What count is it this time? Two? It's our third. What gave it away? Your open discussions. I couldn't care less what he knows. Every second we stand around arguing in the woods is a second that I'm anxiously worrying about her. Take us to the cabin and take us there now. With each passing moment, our relationship may be damaged even further. Though I fear the rift between us may already be permanent. Holy shit. <laughs> oh my gosh. Ugh. Ugh. Uh, he's pretty loquacious. It's pretty cringe. And if it is permanent, then what? You'll kill us again. Oh, you just wait and see. My vengeance will echo the depths of my bereavement. Don't provoke him. I prefer if we didn't die again. I'm not fond of dying. <laughs> Why this reminds not? me of It's Always You've Sunny. You've already done it twice. Or he's like... Yeah. I will come down on this hospital like the hammer of Thor. The thunder of my vengeance will echo through these corridors like the gust of a thousand winds. And it's just kind of like ridiculous for the situation. Dude, chill. <laughs> it was unpleasant. It was only unpleasant because you think it's supposed to be unpleasant. I'll make you feel what I feel if it's the last thing I do. And mark my words, you won't like it when it happens. Oh, how exciting. I'd love to see you try. Can I? Well, I'm not just going to. <laughs> I'm going to actually do it. I'm looking forward to it. Good. I am too. Can I talk now? Yes, I can. Great. Now that you're listening, let me remind you that if you're here in the woods, means that the princess is not dead and that her very existence currently poses a direct threat to the entire world. I'll believe that when I see her living body. Did I hear that right? He says she's alive. Our beloved lives again. Yes, she's alive. But you're going to have to make her not alive. You'll have to slay her. It's your job. We absolutely will not. This is a tale of love and redemption. This time, it will not end Dude, this is why I didn't shed. pick up the schizophrenia so perk when I created my character trying. in real life. <laughs> it's pretty useful for um, multiple, like, uh, forms of entertainment. Mm -hmm. Let's do our best to keep him away from anything sharp. If we're lucky, there won't even be a blade when we get to the cabin. Okay. We haven't talked enough about how different this place <laughs> is. <laughs> we haven't talked enough. What happens if we don't go to the cabin? I'm the one in charge here. If we slay her again, you are not going to make us off ourselves. Is that clear? Whatever happens next, it seems like all our answers are in the cabin. We might as well pass... Uh, we might as well see this through. I'm done with this. Bye! Turn around and leave. I say, since we already did the Nihilist ending, we should just proceed to the cabin. Otherwise, they're going to chat for another 15 minutes. All right, proceed to the cabin. I'm sure you've already heard my words of warning in one of your past lives. You've already managed to slay her once, just don't muck it up this time, all right? Oh, we'll muck it up all right. 
we'll get our happy ending, even if it damns each and every person who's ever lived. Ugh. Uh, whatever you do, don't let him influence a single decision. He's clearly lost it. I hate that I'm agreeing with him on anything, but I really don't like being at the whims of someone so... unstable. It's stressful. Yes, having all those feelings isn't very productive, is it? But we're just passengers here. Why stress over something you can't control? You're saying that like stress is just something you can turn off. It is. It's easy. Whatever happens, happens. Are you even alive? What's the point of doing anything if you're not going to feel a single emotion? I don't know. I just exist. And that's fine with me. This is horribly unproductive. <laughs> the cabin and your extremely important destiny await. All right, Lars, do you want to proceed to the cabin? <laughs> well, I mean, let's take her. Let's take a minute here to think about the. Yes, proceed to the cabin. The interior of the cabin feels dry and brittle. What? <laughs> hold up a crumbling ceiling like mummified ribs, each elegantly carved detail of the stately building preserved in an extended stasis. Everything here has been kept safe and dry and lifeless. But you're not alone. You can feel something watching you. There is a figure faintly outlined against the dusty wood of the far wall. It's got some egg. Huh? Shut the fuck up! <laughs> She does, man. She's got a dump truck on her. So she does live. <sighs> she doesn't look very alive to me. Before you can make a move, the figure is gone, vanishing behind the door on the far side of the room. The door at the end of the room, but there isn't a door. It's just that damn mirror again. Ah, yes, the mirror. So we can see the monster we've become if it even lets us look before it vanishes too. The mirror? Is this some kind of joke? Did you all plan this out before dying? There is no mirror. There's the door to the basement, the table, and the pristine blade. Huh. That's strange. There's supposed to be a pristine blade. Why isn't there a pristine blade? Maybe it's gone because we've already killed her with it. Perhaps it's gone because... And oh my so god! guilt has started to <laughs> worm its way into each and every one of you. Perhaps all of you do feel just as bad as I about what we've done. Oh, if you felt the oppressive guilt I feel, we would have manifested that weapon directly into our heart. I suppose it doesn't matter why the blade is gone, but you're going to have to find it if you're going to do this right. So why don't you march over to that door and make your way down to the basement? Yeah. So what are we doing, Lars? Approach the mirror. You make your way to the door at the end of the room, stopping just in front of it. You must think you're looking at that mirror you mentioned earlier, the one that doesn't exist. Just reach forward and open the door. Still so hazy. We should try and clean it off. Yes. Trying to touch it does seem to be the magic spell to get it out of our way. Alright, let's wipe the mirror clean. It's time for all of you to see yeah, man. what we've become. You reach forward and place your hand on the door to the basement. The handle is just a little to your right, and a little down. <laughs> so much for our reflection. We didn't need to see ourselves anyway. I'm much more interested in seeing other things. I see. We are too hideous for even a mirror to behold. Oh my. Ugh. We can only hope she might still see some good in us. No way left in to go but down. This guy. Ugh. Wait, hold on. We didn't take. We didn't consider our options here, bud. Open. Revealing an antique staircase There's one option. lit by weak torchlight. All right. The air here is so stale it practically stands still, as if the very molecules of this place have been fossilized, trapped for eons until your arrival. 
Even the blaze of the torches can't penetrate the odorless air. As if they'd run out of fuel to burn ages ago, their light still flickering more out of habit than from adhering to a physical reality. A wispy figure watches you from the bottom of the stairs, face veiled in shadow. There she is again. My love. She's just an old memory. Your eyes lock for a brief moment, then she vanishes around the corner. Alright. I'm sorry about last time. Are we good? <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry I killed you, Lars. Are we good? Are we good, bro? <laughs> <laughs> is anyone there? I think we have a lot to talk about. I think I just want to proceed down quietly. Yep. As you descend the final step, the form of the princess comes into view. A skeletal body lying in a heap on the floor, her wrist still bound to the wall by a heavy chain. This cell is a dark and isolated place, with not so much as a window to allow starlight to penetrate the gloom. Penetrate? See? She's dead. No. Penetrate? What foul trickery is this? How can this be? We just saw her alive and well a moment ago, floating away transparently. What a fucking moron. Yeah. I think that's the joke, I think that's the joke though. Yeah. Whatever we saw was a ghost. Thought we were all on the same page. Do try to keep up. Thoughts are interrupted by the sound of a slamming door and a clicking lock. Oh, I thought that was you messing with me with your soundboard. <laughs> oh, you want me to mess with you with your with my soundboard? No. You turn to see the shade of the princess staring down at you from the top of the stairs, clutching a brightly burning torch. So that's where the blade is. It's already in her heart. And yet she isn't dead. She is dead. Have you never heard of a ghost before? Oh, for the love of me, can we not waste time arguing over the semantics of what is and isn't dead? She is clearly conscious. She clearly just slammed the door on you, and she clearly has a weapon. Your pristine blade sticking out of her chest. This is extremely bad. Catastrophic, even. Yeah, dead or not, what are we supposed to do about her? Slaying or destroying, if we want to be a little more death neutral, seems off the table. Stop it! <laughs> Calm down. Wow. We make amends. She obviously still holds us in her heart. She's bearing a torch for us and everything. Ah. What? You knocked like 20 times. <laughs> I stopped. <laughs> After I told you to. <laughs> but she hasn't said anything. Are you sure she can talk like this? You came back. <gasps> I missed you. That angelic voice. I missed you too, my beloved. That angelic voice. I missed you too, my beloved. Hi, everybody. You back to your old self quick. <laughs> Hi, Dr. Nick. I don't ever want to hear you do that again, Lars. That was so scary. Dr. Nick? From yes. The Simpsons? Okay. <laughs> your voice just made it scary. Okay. Yes. Seeing her dazzling countenance again has reignited the warmth in my heart. I have found it. <sighs> this body is committed. We can have our perfect. If you're like this in real life, when you're while you're watching this, you need to stop. If you're like this in real life with your partner, and they're okay with it, please just keep it to yourself. Thank you. Yeah, even if they're okay with it. We're supposed to be together, but it keeps making us hurt each other. The torch falls from the princess's hand and bounces down the stairs. Catch it! It'll be so much Catch better it. when it's gone. <gasps> the skeletal wood of the basement, perfectly dry after uncountable years of desiccation, immediately catches fire. Defecation? Desiccation. No it means that. No, no. Des Desiccation means that the water, all the moisture has been drained from an area. 
Oh, yeah. I, I know, I'm just being a silly little yeah, guy. Yeah, it's, it's hard for a place to catch fire if there's a lot of water in it. A lot of moisture. She's trying to kill us. A misplaced oh, can we become a ghost too? <gasps> and then we can have like weird ghost sex where we keep missing each other's private parts because we're ghosts. And you lost me there. <laughs> um, why did you close the door? Let me out. Are you trying to kill me? I'm going to burn. Are you mad at me for killing you? Rush for the blade or rush for the door? Uh, why did you close the door with my instinct? I think just to make it interesting, I'm going to try rushing for the blade. Okay. Stairs towards the princess, the entire cabin erupts into a raging inferno. You push through the flames, trying to ignore the choking hot air filling your lungs. You manage to reach her, your hand wrapping around the hilt of the blade. Uh, look at Granny Princess there. Mmm. She could probably suck it down pretty easily. Uh, okay, stop. Stop. Ew. Dad Larks. Ah! She's smiling. Ugh, what the fuck? Smiling warmly as her skin bubbles away. She places her hand on yours and clutches it to her chest. Ah! It is unbearable at first. Every inch of you screams as your flesh is stripped away, your muscles stiffening as they're cooked, your blood boiling in your veins. But it isn't long before the flames <laughs> no, take your I nerves. don't like it! And with them, your ability to feel much of anything. See? That wasn't so bad. It was so bad. Somehow, nothing is so much worse. Well, Tristan kicked his internet cord again, I guess, so we're back. You'll get used to it. There are still the feelings of the heart. Those never go away. Oh, nice. they always do in the end. You just haven't experienced enough. Eventually you'll want them to stop too. You'll make them stop. Trust me. Please stop. Princess's this is disgusting. Fades. Her skin peels away, and then her muscle, until all you can see is her charring skull. Locked in an eternal grin. Yeah. It's very romantic, really. We hey, we got an Achievo. Yay! We can die. What was that achievement, Tristan? For people following along at home. Uh, here, let me take a quick look. Uh, the achievement was burning down the house. Burn at the hands of the faded spirits. Faded, Ugh. just like Tristan. <laughs> oh. No! Oh, what the fuck? Okay. I didn't like that. That was actually, like, incredibly uncomfortable. But despite your best... <laughs> yeah, yeah, I know. Like, the, that was just gross horror. Ugh. Nasty. <laughs> but despite your best efforts, you do well, not die. Well, then why die. are you trying to slurp it up? I'm just trying to read the text, Lars. No, you you made distinctive slurping noises after that. It's time for you to leave. Like your memory returns into into like where did she go? Skulls. Okay. Approach the mirror. Uh, you would skull. Uh, you approach the mirror. This this doesn't feel right. It feels different. Final. Yes. I fear that we won't like what we'll see. What if we just sit here and preen for a while? That can't hurt, right? No. The voices feel small, distant as you approach. Gaze into your reflection. Gaze into your reflection. Silence as you reach forward. They're gone once again. The mirror always makes them leave, but you need to see what's in it. You've withered. 
Okay. Well, at I'm least they didn't do the thing, you know, in every media piece ever. You, you know, where, like... You know when, like, it, when you're watching any show, playing any video game, doing, like, any entertainment media at all, when someone's melting, what do they always say? I'm uh, melting! Yeah. Ah! <laughs> Which is a really weird thing to say. Like, ah, I'm melting. Like, why, why does every... It's... <laughs> You it's wouldn't like when there's be like, saying that. Yeah. You would just fucking scream. Yeah. It's also like when there's like a spider villain of some sort, like an arachnid character, they always go <laughs> like they can't resist the temptation to like do like the <laughs> <phone> noise. Yeah. <laughs> you find yourself in the long quiet once again. Proceed to the cabin. You were at the cabin. That's not a cabin. That's a woman. Approach her. See? Well, either way, we want to go inside, right? Yeah, these are all dialogue options we went through. Um, I'm ready to go back. I am ready to go back! I will be here when it is time for us to meet again. I hope not, you nasty bitch. You're on a path. How many times do we have to go to back to the cabin? At least one more. Got some cake. Shut the fuck up. <laughs> she does, man. She's got a dump truck on her. 